welcome to HackBits, where we cover a variety of cybersecurity subjects. Join your host, Gaspar Martirano, as he interviews cybersecurity experts and discusses the latest cybersecurity news, trends, data breaches, and updates on state-sponsored cybercrime. Oh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm glad uh, you, you're here. Um, welcome to HackBits. Uh, this is a weekly podcast that will cover topics ranging from the latest security, cybersecurity news, trends, data breaches, and then updates on state-sponsored cybercrime. Uh, I'm your host, Gaspar Martirano. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at LIFARS. Uh, LIFARS is a global leader in incident response, digital forensics, forensics uh, uh, penetration testing, ransomware mitigate, mitigation, and uh, resiliency services. Excuse me. So our guest today is Don Byrne. Uh, Don is the uh, Chief Revenue Officer at uh, Avanon. Uh, Don has over 20 years in information technology, and uh, before joining Avanon, he was uh, uh, Don led uh, Four Scouts expansion into the federal market, um, and uh, Don holds a Bachelor's of uh, Business Administration in Information Systems Management uh, from the University of Iowa. So uh, welcome, Don. Good, good to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So, so before we start, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'd like to hear uh, more about your background and uh, and what you do right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started. I guess uh, you, you know you got to mention Iowa Hawkeyes. So I appreciate you putting yeah. that plug in there. But uh, right out of college, I went to uh, worked at Accenture. At, at the time, it was Anderson Consulting, uh, and that was a I, I that was great. It was. Um, an awesome opportunity for me because it really got my hands dirty in technology. And the, yeah, I don't know those people that know uh, Accenture and how they work. They train you, they throw you into the feed you to the wolves and you, you learn a ton. So that's really where I got involved in technology and um, building and designing systems programming. And from there, actually, I just, uh, I got, I, you know, got involved in cybersecurity. So I was there for a few years and, uh, after I was done with that, got involved in cybersecurity and and continued uh, growing and building. Uh, eventually, ended up in sales. So, one of the nice things about um, having that technical background and being involved in sales is that now sales has really changed quite a bit. It's it's now requires uh, a technical acumen. So, I, I feel like I got a pretty good mix of technology and sales skills and. Um, you know, which is which which is fun for me. I'm still a propeller head at uh, at heart, but uh, was at Forest Scout, like you mentioned, for a few years and um, did quite well there. Grew that uh, um, their federal practice basically, you know, zero to six million in in, in four years, and um, and then you know I I built relationships with uh, with Gil Friedrich, who at the time was the head of engineering there, and. Um, we kept in touch over the years and he calls me one day and says, Hey, we're, we're starting a company called, called Avanon and we'd like you to be the first sales guy. And, uh, that was it. You know, I've been here for now five and a half years and, uh, you know, since before customer one, and it's, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. That's great. So, I mean, so you've seen, uh, you said you've been involved in, uh, in, in tech for, for, for over 20 years. So, um, you've seen the kind of transformation of how it was back in the days until now. You know, when I started with uh, uh, an IT, we were still using modems to, to you know, to, 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 to call each other and, <laughs> and connect to bulletin board systems. So today, obviously, it's a different world we live in. So uh, security is um, the issue with, with cybercrime and, and what's going on. It just gets worse and worse as, as uh-huh. technology gets faster and it gets businesses are more um, dependent on, on information systems to run their companies. And, you know, back in the day, I think you just thought of banks and certain businesses that would have to worry about security. But now it's just about everyone. Uh, yeah, I mean, 100 percent. I mean, we, we know based on the studies that we do and, and the things that we look at that, you know, you, you think charities and you think small businesses aren't, uh, you know, they're under the radar. They're not um, everyone. If you know, everyone for that matter is a target. And, um, it's, it's, you know, everyone's got to invest something in securing their infrastructure for sure. Yeah. And, 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 and that being said, I, I know that, uh, you know, obviously businesses that can afford to, that have the budgets, uh, have these, you know, security operation centers, right? So they have, they have a SOC and the SOC team 
And, um, you know, I, I, when I, back in a former life, when I was, um, I was an IT manager at a publishing company. So I, I managed the networks and, and, and their desktops. And I knew the stress of that job. And this was, uh, there was about 200, uh, workstations and I don't know, five or six servers that at the time. And, and it was pretty stressful. And I didn't really think about security, honestly, back then I was more worried about just, you know, uh, someone's windows locked up and they couldn't, they couldn't print or whatever the issues were, or the server was down. But now, um, you know, with things being in the cloud and having these mixed uh, uh, systems and architectures, it, it's a lot more complicated. And you have these these security teams, and and they do suffer from burnout. You know, they 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 go through um, probably very very high levels of stress. So tell me a little bit about that, and and kind of what your thoughts are on some of the things that happen to these teams, and and what you know how do how do they how do they combat some of the issues? Yeah, I think all all those things are still in play, right? You got. Um... You, you know, <laughs> things are getting locked. I can't access my account. Um, I can't. Uh, I can't print. All those things are still in play. But now you've got um, you've got accounts all over the place, right? You've got accounts in Dropbox and Box. You've got accounts in O365, and your HR system has uh, an account, right? And all these are uh, hackers are are looking to you know to get access to those accounts, right? And and so now when, when the HR team decides they're going to deploy a, a, a system, right, that, that's web enabled and it's got you know, you know, an account there, you know, the, the SOC team, the same SOC team that's been supporting your entire organization now has to support security of that, right? And when email moved to the cloud, um, same thing, right? Now they're required to uh, secure and monitor uh, what's going on in O365. And email, continues to be um, email threats, phishing threats continue to be a problem, a real big problem. In fact, it's the number one threat resulting in breaches. So you've got essentially the same team, right? You know, that, that hasn't really grown a lot, but now you've got a ton of other systems that they need to monitor and make sure they're secure. Because again, the hackers are trying to get access to those accounts, either to get that data that's sitting in that account or to use right. that account to launch another attack. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, funny you say that because back in the day, right, your biggest worry is that the machine was locked up and you might have to reboot it or whatever, or maybe you lost some data. But now your machine's locked up and they want you know five million dollars to unlock it. You know, so so it's a little a little different level of stress, uh, especially when it comes to the email threats that are happening. It's it's con- you know, it's it's a bombard- bombardment. It's constant. It's a constant email threat. <laughs> And it takes up a lot of time uh, and effort to, to, you know, chasing down what's good and what's bad. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if those phishing threats are, um, you know, how seriously are they taken by, by businesses? I know that some corporations take it very serious, but there's others that, that don't. Well, so there's um, companies have, they know in general, so companies start deploying, organizations start deploying. They know they're, they're a threat, right? They know that their e- their users are getting phishing attacks, um, receiving them. So so they know that. So they try to shore up their defenses. Um, they try to train the end users and, and they try to do certain things. One of the things that organizations do quite a bit is they're going to train people like, hey, identify this phishing attack. And if you think it's suspicious, right, you need to report it. You need to tell us. So if you see something, say something. And we that we do that in, in, in society today, and 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 so what are users doing now, right? They are now saying, "Hey, is this a phishing email? Is this a real Amazon email, or is it fake?" So what do they do? They forward it on to the IT team or the SOC, and they got to spend time looking at it and analyzing it. It turns out every time a user reports an email like that, it takes on average seven minutes for the SOC to investigate that email to determine if it's phishing or not. So. We not only have the threats coming in that are real, we've got emails that are coming in that people are reporting that the SOC has to investigate. Um, It, 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 you know, the policies that were the things that we're trying to get our users to do, they're doing them. They're reporting these emails and it's causing more workload. So they not only have to deal with a real threat, they have to determine whether legitimate emails are, 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 are a threat as well. So that that's that's 100% exacerbating the problem, um, and that's part of what's leading to the sock burnout. Is you've just got, you know, is this phishing? Is this not? 
Uh, and oh, by the way, when there is an actual phishing email, e email that comes in, now they have to go and determine who clicked on that link. Is that account compromised? Who else received that email? Um, they're now really playing essentially email admin uh, as a result. Most of the SOCs are 23% of the time they spend in a study that we've done is spent managing the email threat. Wow. Like responding to these kind of things. So it's, it's a significant amount of time. Sure. So so how much of it is a uh, – look, the technology is an issue, right? You have to have the right stuff in place to try and prevent these uh, these phishing emails from coming in and these attacks from happening. But you know, how much of it is it a people problem where, you know, look, I when I managed, I was a director of IT for, for, for a department. And, um, you know, I was shocked there was one person that opened up their free, uh, what was it? It was a Dunkin' Donuts, uh, <laughs> get your free donut. I, I think she opened up the same email three times in one week. And it was a phishing email each time. <laughs> and, you, mm-hmm. and, and I would boggled my mind because I didn't understand how she didn't get it, <laughs> that it wasn't real. Uh, right. you know, so how much is it is a people problem? Is it an end user issue that that is the end user training enough? And and I guess when is it enough? How much of it do you need to pound into someone's head before they realize that, hey, uh, you know, Krispy Kreme is not trying to give you a year's supply of donuts for free? So we've gotten complacent, right? We've we've gotten to the point where we think, well, if Proofpoint or Mimecast or Microsoft or Google can't solve the problem. You know, no one can. We, we've got the best we possibly can. Nothing else can be done. And so that's created complacency because, you know, you look at you look at the old email security providers, the legacy guys is what we call them. And they made their name when email was on prem. Mm-hmm. And email was on prem. They came to market in 2000s when flip phones were cool and you had MySpace and all that. So they're 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 in the market securing on prem email. Email moved to the cloud, right? And, and so what they did is they, you know, these companies tried to take their data center technology and just retrofit it to, to, to secure the cloud. And that, that ain't, that's not the right approach, right? That you, you need a cloud-enabled solution from the ground up, AI and APIs, uh, 100%. So most people think exactly what you just described as, hey, we got to train the end users because we've got everything we've, you know, we've got the best of the best. Unfortunately, is the best of the best is legacy stuff. And, and, and so people got complacent and they think, well, you know, now it's time to train the end users. Our approach is like, look, end user training is should be for exception handling, right? You don't train the end users to secure your environment. You train the end users to handle exceptions because there's no silver bullet. No matter what anyone's going to tell you, every solution out there, there's no silver bullet. Right. Right. So what you do is you buy you you get solutions, technology. You you first understand that um, you need you need essentially next generation email security, AI and API enabled technologies. You need that number one. You put those in place for customers like ours. They see a ninety nine point two percent reduction in phishing attacks overnight. And then what do you do about that point eight percent? That's really what you focus on. So like you said. That one user that kept opening that email, that's what you focus on. You focus on those individuals. Those are the exceptions that you handle for. So, But you got to really first understand that there is something you can do from a technical perspective. Yeah. Understanding that first and accepting that is really important. No, I understood. And I think that, you know, the, the burnout part is when I look at the numbers that, that you know, I had read in the article you had written, uh, the, the post, that, that was, what was it? One place it was about 16,000 emails reported to, to a sock in a sim- single month and then on average you know some 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 places have up to uh what was it if you have a 10,000 user organization uh you can have up to 550 or 500 a month coming through the door and it, yeah that's a lot of time and hours i can see the burnout and that's just phishing that's just emails right that's that's not talking about anything else that's happening that's literally just just speaking. email and that, just that, email. that's what that's what gets into that 23 you know you're like well what do you mean they're spending 23 percent of their time how could they be doing that well that's the problem you know, they're, they're, they're review- these 16,000 emails, no joke. And this is organizations don't understand. We're just going to pull We'll implement a policy, right? That policy is you need to report emails that you think are suspicious to the SOC, right? right? And we don't think what's downhill when we implement that policy, you know, what's downhill? Well, the SOC is downhill, unfortunately. So that's what happened in this organization. They implemented this policy. Who did it fall on? It fell on the SOC. You know, seven minutes per email on average to analyze. That's that's a lot of time, 
right? So one of the things we talk about is consider what's downhill. Consider the actions, you know, the result of your actions, the unintended consequences when you implement these policies, when you when you really talk about training. Yeah, and look, there's a there's so there's th- that that burnout is coming from this this data overload from just getting uh you know all this all this you know all this they're chasing a lot of things right they're chasing these phantoms sometimes and and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you had the stats there but it talked about how 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 not all uh, of the reported emails right are, are are malicious so so you're spending a lot of, all this time and effort working on things that end up being nothing. Um, but I guess you have to be right a hundred percent of the time, right? The, the bad guy just needs to be, uh, just be right once. Uh, so they don't always need to be correct and, and get into the system. So I guess you have to look at everything that comes through the door. So that, that, that burnout is going to happen because you're looking at so much data and the stress level, is just going to be incredible for these staffs. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, you, a lot of the emails that come in that people report, you know, you'll find a, you know, 20, 30 percent of them are actually malicious. And that's the failure on the technology that's there to secure the environment. But the other, you know, the 70 to 80 percent are, are clean. But again, the policy is dictating, hey, we got to review these. We got, you know, people are reporting them. We got to review them. We got to let them know, do our investigation. Now, the other thing is when when that 30 percent, you know, that, that turn out to be actually malicious, um, the SOC has got to do something about it. It can't just be, oh, okay, thanks for reporting, run it. Now they got to do the investigation. So it's it's death by alert, right? But then then they have to scramble, you know, scramble the jets to now go find out who else had that email, right? They got to do, there's some really archaic tools, you know, like PowerShell script that people talk about to, to see who else received that email, who clicked on that link in that email, is someone's account compromised? If it is, what what files, what data, what emails did they actually access to see if you know there's any uh, uh, compliance issues there? So it, it's not just the alert overload; it's it, it's also the uh, the fact that you know now they're now they got to do something about it, right? When when yeah. when it, you know something's actually made it through. What do you think about uh, you know these socks? I think one of the one of the issues uh, with these centers is that. There's there is a shortage of just people that have the skills to kind of deal with everything as well. So it's not just a you know again I go back to a people problem. So uh, you can have a you can have a staff, but not everyone in the staff is going to be necessarily as skilled uh, to to, the, to do their job. And I think that's that's a, a big issue in cyber right now is just finding skilled workers to actually perform. Um, what do you think about that? About uh, just the you know the the burnout happening from you know the the one uh, smart. Uh, 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 person in the room is <laughs> is is t- taking on the majority of the responsibility and doing you know a lot of the work and just the the, the slackers are just kind of getting by because you know what we can't fire them because who else are we going to get to fill the position? Yeah, I mean there's 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 actually a, you know a couple thoughts I have on that and the um, you know there you you have the analysts the people that are investigating and doing the homework and you know they 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 look at it at a high level as you know, does this link point to a legitimate website? They'll they'll put it through Virus Total, uh, and you know they'll they'll see if it goes to a landing page. You know that's that's pretty pretty that's relatively easy, right? I think the right. hard part is now now okay, I got to do a little bit more. I got to do a level deep, right? And and that's where I think you're talking about the more in depth you know analysis of what needs to be done. And and I I don't you know I don't know if that's more of an art or, or a science, but yeah, I, I, I could see that being very difficult to train on and, and get people smart on because it's not, it, it, you know, there, there, there really isn't a, a playbook necessarily for that. And, and then I think the other thing, and this is where, you know, I always say that, you know, to my kids like learn how to program at some point in your childhood, because you use it the rest of your life, right? These threat hunters, I, you know, it's not just about hunting for the threat. It's, they're going to have to learn how to program and and write scripts and 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 you know dig into some of this stuff, right? So n- now you're requiring not only someone to be a threat hunter, but also you know be able to dissect uh, programming languages and and scripts and things like that to get to the bottom of it. So even even a more complex um, skill set required uh, on that. So so to close things up, explain to me just kind of give me an overview of of how your company kind of 
tries to reduce that pain <laughs> in the sock and what they can do to kind of um, to really help along um, uh, to, 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 to try and lessen that burnout, just start to lessen the, the kind of what, what goes on. I know that um, I'm sure there's plenty of case studies and, and, and you've quite done quite a few that kind of tells us like what, what can you do to help it, uh, to help it alleviate some of the pain points that the sock is suffering through? Yeah, I, I th- you know, from our perspective, we're we're technology solution. So that's what we, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier is that email when it was on prem, it was secured one way. Now email's in the cloud; it needs to be secured completely different, right? So we came to the market with a radically different approach that anything anything else that was out there. And people thought we had five heads in 2015. They're like, you're going to be, you're going to compete in email security space. With a different approach, why? You know, and we're like, well, it really requires a different type of solution. Um, and, and, and so we built a solution that's not a gateway that sits in front of the cloud. Um, it's embedded within the cloud. It's using APIs and, and true AI um, in machine learning to solve the problem, right? So we have a radically different approach, which yields much better results. Um, than the legacy solutions that are out there much better. We always tell people, you don't have to take my word for it. You can try it out for yourself. It, it, it takes five minutes. So the approach is completely different. And, and what we say is that don't get complacent, right? If you have a problem, you don't need to rely on training. Training is important. You have to train people, but that should be the exception, right? So so you don't get complacent and, and you should look at these next gen, these AI um, and API enabled technologies as f- the starting point, right? And once you've gotten those, that, you know, you gotten those advanced threats out of there, they're not reaching your end users anymore. Then you, then you focus on the, the, the people in process, right? The, 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 you know, the policies that you implement, the training of the end users, right? Those are the exception handlers. So we, we just always encourage people to really think um, about, you know, hey, how are we going to solve this problem? It's people, process, and technology. We encourage, obviously, to start with the technology. Right, and we have to make sure that that the the board members and the the, the ones that are kind of uh, writing the checks, right, that are that are paying the bills, are making sure that that they are providing the budgets necessary to invest into technology. Because I think uh, they're doing a disservice to themselves. It's it's uh, better to prevent this all from happening and do your best to to. Um, uh, uh, combat it in, in any way you can, but you have to throw some money at it. It's not something where, you know, it, I think some people just put their head in the sand. They want to ignore it. And they're like, well, you know, it, it, what are the chances of it happening to me? It's like, you well, it's like insurance, right? So you don't need it until you need it. <laughs> so it's, I, I, yeah. I, it, 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 it's interesting. I just think about this. I'm like, I would not be like to be the individual um, that refuses a, a budgetary request around security. I mean, that's a tough position to be in, right? Like, Hey, our guys want to, you know, our team wants to get this, that, and the other, and it's going to cost you this amount. I just wouldn't like to be in that position to say no. Um, because you know, you don't, <laughs> next thing you know, you're, you're, you're headline news for the wrong reason. Right. Do you want, do you want to play 400,000 now or 4 million later on if you don't, right. uh, and, you don't do the right and thing dam- and have a damaged reputation on top of it. Exactly. Well, uh, Don, I appreciate it. Uh, why don't you give us the, the website and where they can go and uh, find out more about about uh, about the company and, and what you guys do? Yep, uh, Avanon.com, uh, A-V-A-N-A-N.com. Uh, um, you can go there and, and we've got, uh, we we always say we've got content. We've got a great content team, uh, marketing team. Um, we've got content to make you uh, laugh, cry, and think. So... <laughs> Um, we've got the, the laugh is we got cartoons, we get cybersecurity cartoons, uh, up there and they're catchy. And I think we have a lot of fun putting them together. Um, we have, uh, content to make you cry. Um, in the situation we're in, we see a lot of, you know, crazy phishing attacks that we think, you know, people are interested in understanding. So we deconstruct them, we write about them, we post them. So, uh, you know, those those attack briefs that we call will make you cry. And then obviously think um, we got a lot of great webinars and um, white papers and, and, and studies that we put out. So, um, you know, we got great content there, um, you know, encourage people to, to take a look. And obviously, if you want to 
you know, if you want to take it, take a test and determine, you know, how effective your existing solution is, uh, it's five minutes to uh, set up a trial. And, you know, at the end of the trial, we'll show you all the attacks uh, that the other uh, providers that you have in front of us would have missed or did miss. So um, feel free to reach out to us there. Great. Well, uh, Don, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and, uh, you know, uh, you're a valued partner over at LIFAR. So uh, I really appreciate uh, the, the work that we can do together. And, you know, this is a war we're fighting. And I think people need to realize that it's it's a battle that goes on daily and it's uh, and it's not getting any better. Unfortunately, it's just something that over time is probably going to get worse and increase. So I, I, I hope that, um, you know, we're all uh, can join together and kind of fight this war. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if we'll win it. Uh, I'd like to, but it seems like um, you know, when, when technology and people are together, there's, there's always bound to be problems, uh, one form or another. So I appreciate your time, taking your time with me today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it as well.